Hi guys, Robo46 here, welcome yourselves back to MotoGP20 on the Xbox One X. It is time to do a 100% race distance race around uh, the Red Bull ring again because it was the Grand Prix of Styria at the weekend. And uh, I'm going to be using Miguel Oliveira for this race, so uh, let's see how we get on. But of course, we're going to be doing it in a similar format to the previous video that I've done. Um, we're just going to be racing for the whole 28 laps, but we're going to be talking about the race itself, about what happened at the weekend. Um, we'll just quickly talk about Moto3. Had a fantastic race in Moto3 as always. It was uh, Vietti who got his first ever win in Moto3. Fantastic win from him. Um, Tony Arbolino came home in second, and Ogura came home in third. Unfortunately, uh, John McPhee crashed out with two laps to go, um, but he was looking strong up to that point, but unfortunately lost the front. Um, yeah, Moto3 is always uh, a good race, and it's uh, it, it sets up the day nicely for racing. Moto3 is always uh, you know, a bit of a dogfight and uh, really, really good to watch. Usually really close as well, so um, yeah. I would recommend watching Moto3 if you don't usually then you know you're really missing out on fantastic racing moto 2 had a bit of a talking point um now it was uh, jorge martin who uh, led most of the race with uh Bezecchi chasing him most of the race and uh it was actually Bezecchi who ended up getting the win despite jorge martin crossing the line first now, uh, coming out of turn eight, um, Jorge Martin went too far to the left. He went over the the outside curb, but then he put both wheels on the green, and uh, that was deemed as uh, obviously track extending. So, because the the gap at the end was very very small, they decided to swap the places between Jorge Martin and Bezecchi so uh, even though Martin actually won uh, the win went to Bezecchi because uh, Jorge Martin got penalised for track extending now it was a little bit harsh um, because Jorge Martin had led for most of the race um, and yeah he, he definitely deserved the win obviously we saw him get the win um, at the previous race around here but yeah it was literally coming out of here turn eight and he just went over here and went onto the green on the outside both wheels on the outside and that was uh it was only for a, like a split second as well now Bezeki went on the green as well but only one of his wheels went on the green so if you have one wheel on the green but one wheel touching the white line it classes as being inside track limits if both of your wheels are on the green and you've got no connection with the white line or the kerb or anything, then that is uh, deemed out of bounds, outside of track limits. Therefore, you get penalised. Obviously, they uh, do it a couple of times during the race, then they'll get a warning. And if they do it again, they will get a uh, long lap penalty. But because it was the final lap, obviously, they'd already gone past turn one, which is where the penalty loop is for this track. Um, it meant that Jorge Martin could not obviously do a long lap penalty. Um, so sometimes in that instance, they will just give him a three second penalty. But they decided, you know, because the gap was so close anyway, they just decided to reverse the results. So yeah, it was harsh. But you know, rules are rules. However, race direction really need to... Uh, you know, th th there's been... A lot of inconsistencies with race direction over god knows how many years race direction has been so inconsistent throughout you know especially more recent years as well so it was uh you know i, I guess they were going by the rule book but you know again still a little bit harsh but it is what it is so yeah marco bezecchi ended up getting uh his first win in Moto2 uh, with Jorge Martin in second place. Remy Gardner, he managed to get on the podium in third place. Um, 
we had an unfortunate incident with um, Sam Lowe's on lap one, going into turn three, hit a false neutral, couldn't get the bike stopped. And when he got in gear, the uh, rear locked up a bit and he backed it in to, to turn three, collected two riders with him. They all went down. Um, and then Sam got given the black flag, but he did get back up. And uh, just as he was given the black flag, he ended up crashing at turn four. So he wasn't going to go much further anyway. Um, but yeah, that was just an unfortunate incident with uh, with Sam. So uh, that was Moto2. Again, another pretty good race. And uh, obviously very close at the end. It's just unfortunate that, uh, you know, Jorge Martin went outside of track limits. Now then, MotoGP. Now, obviously, at the previous race around the Red Bull Ring, there was that humongous crash uh, between Zarco and Franco Morbidelli. And uh, Zarco was given a penalty, even though, really, you know, it was a racing incident. It was just uh, an unfortunate racing incident. But, um, yeah, this is what I mean by inconsistency for race direction. Bruno, Zago got penalised. Wasn't his fault at all. That was a racing incident. Um, going through turn one when he went up the inside of Paul Espargaro, who was wide. And then Paul Espargaro decided to, you know, close the door. But Zarko was there. They connected. Now, Zarko obviously leaning off the bike. His head was on the right-hand side of the bike, so he wouldn't have even been able to see Paul at that point. And they obviously connected. Pole went down. Zarco got a long lap penalty, which shouldn't have been a penalty at all. It was a racing incident. But yeah, Race Direction decided to penalise Zarco again for uh, the racing incident uh, in the previous race. And uh, Zarco had to start from the back of the... No, he didn't have to start from the back of the grid. He had to start from pit lane. So even worse than starting from the back of the grid, he had to start from pit lane. He also had a operation on a scaphoid in uh, his hand, which he obviously damaged uh, from, from that crash. So he was in hospital, I believe it was on the Wednesday. And then he, he didn't ride on Friday, but then he went out on Saturday and he actually didn't do too bad at all. He uh, managed to put in some decent times and he actually ended up qualifying uh, really high as well uh, on the front row but of course something from the pit lane you couldn't, couldn't start from the front row you have to start from pit lane now pit lane around here it's the exit is out of turn one so obviously he wasn't allowed to be released until everyone had gone through and obviously turn one is a slow corner so it's not like they get to the end of the start finish straight and that's the pit exit. It's literally end of the straight and they go through turn one and then pit lane exit is uh, just past turn one. So you have to wait for everyone to come out in turn one. Of course, they're all getting up to speed on the uh, the little straight there and then he's only then just allowed to, to set off. So he uh, lost loads of time, of course. Um, but, you know, he did did do a good race and did, in fact, uh, score a couple of points. But um, it was another race of two halves because uh, there was another incident which caused a red flag. But at the time, you had Joanne Mir, who was actually leading the race by about two seconds. And he was, he was definitely on course for a race win. He was extending his lead over the guys behind. And uh, they couldn't get anywhere near him. He was just clearing off and uh, definitely had had the pace to get the win. Unfortunately, a little way into the race, there, um, Maverick Vinales, he started having mechanical issues with his Yamaha. More mechanical issues for Yamaha. More trouble for Yamaha. He put his hand up and let a few people pass. Uh, then he managed to get going again, and then a couple of laps later, the camera changed to 
basically the end of turn one, or should I say the uh, runoff to turn one, the the airbags, the you know the air fences. One of them completely smashed up with a Yamaha, a Monster Energy Yamaha M1 on fire lodged in the air fence. So yeah, at the end of here, where the barriers is, uh, that's where Maverick's bike ended up. He had no brakes. He, Maverick Vinales suffered brake failure. Um, so he had to jump off his bike at the end of the start-finish straight, doing about 140 mile an hour. Because of course, you know, it's, it's not the longest of straights to start finish straight. But then it goes into a 90 degree right hand corner. So obviously they need to scrub quite a lot of speed off. They obviously put the brakes on, nothing was happening. So he, he, he had to jump off the bike. Um, and luckily Maverick was absolutely fine. He just slid along the ground for a little bit. But um, no injuries or anything. But yeah, the bike just ploughed straight into the air fence. Uh, completely destroyed itself and set itself on fire and because the air fence def got deflated they had to red flag the race because obviously if an air fence gets uh, uh, damaged then they have to red flag it to uh, replace it just in case obviously anything else happens there and they needed to uh, you know if someone else crashes there and there wasn't an air fence then they would have been going straight into a barrier so they had to obviously replace the air fence, make sure it was all safe and that. They actually moved um, part of the barrier and the air fence up towards turn three. Just to try and make that a little bit safer to ensure we didn't have a similar incident to uh, the, the previous race around here. Um, luckily, we didn't really have anything major into there other than obviously a Moto2 with Sam Lowe's. But... Uh, Obviously, that was more uh, a, a error of or the rider and a bit of a mechanical as well, hitting a false neutral. But yeah, and also before the, the actual race itself, we had the confirmation that Mark Marquez is going to be out for at least another two to three months. So we're not going to see Mark back anytime soon. I mean, it could end up being longer depending on how his arm goes. Um, but yeah, it's not... The championship's gone now. It's, uh, you know, if he'd come back, you know, at, at one of these Austrian rounds or even the next round, there would have been an outside possibility that he could possibly, you know, if things went his way, um, there would have been an outside chance of been able to win the championship or should I say there would have been a mathematical chance that he could have won it but yeah that is uh, definitely gone now if he's going to be out for another two to three months which he is so yeah we will have a new champion this year uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on but we'll get back to the actual MotoGP race so yeah Maverick's uh, bike was destroyed the race was red flagged Mir was leading it by just about two seconds at the time so obviously they all had to then come back into the pits and uh, regroup wait for the air fence to be replaced at the end of uh, the start finish straight and then obviously go to the grid in the order that they were at the previous last completed lap that everyone completed and uh, yeah they uh, set off again and uh, it was the KTM of Paul Aspargaro and Jack Miller who were fighting for pretty much the whole race. Obviously, Paul Aspargaro is really, really desperate to win a race for KTM. He was obviously, you know, he had a coming together with the guy we're using now, uh, Miguel Oliveira, at the previous race. But again, an error on Paul's part for, for going wide um, those two had uh, a bit of a uh, argument over what actually happened Paul saying that Oliveira had pretty much crashed by the time he got to him anyway and uh, Oliveira just saying that when, when not everyone is born with the same intelligence um, 
So yeah, that that didn't go too down too well with uh, Paul and that, and uh, yeah, there was a bit of a needle between the two. But um, yeah, the, the the race panned out and uh, the race carried on. Unfortunately for Joanne Mir, he didn't opt to change his front tire. He continued to use the same tire that he used in the first part of the race. Obviously, it would have been a bit worn. And it showed that he didn't quite have the pace in the second part of the race in what he did in the first. And uh, yeah, unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to get back into the lead and build up a lead of what he had previously, which uh, was about two seconds. And uh, it is a shame because he definitely would have won the race. There's no doubt about it. He would have taken his first MotoGP win. But as we saw previous uh, weekend as well you know red flags happen and it's obviously all down to safety and that and uh, they happen for a reason so or should I say that they put the red flags out for a reason and stop the race for a reason um, so yeah me unfortunately not only couldn't battle for the lead but he uh, went backwards a little bit and couldn't even stand inside the top three he did end up getting a fourth position, which was still pretty good. Davizioso was a bit off. Um, he didn't do that well in the first part of the race. I think he was about eighth place or thereabouts uh, when the red flag came up. Um, he did manage to make up a few positions in the second part of the race, uh, getting up to fifth place overall. But um, yeah, expected Dovi to, you know, be fighting for the win again. But it just doesn't work. It, it wasn't happening. Uh, for whatever reason, his setup or maybe the conditions were slightly different, just wasn't happening for Dovi. But yeah, we had a big scrap between Paul Aswagra and Jack Miller throughout most of the race. And uh, in normal uh, Red Bull ring fashion, it did come down to the final, the final lap and the final corner. Uh, Paul Aspargo managed to get into the lead um, during the final lap or on the final lap and uh, Jack Miller decided to try and do a uh, last corner manoeuvre and we know that usually you know the last corner it, it's usually been between a Ducati and a Honda obviously this was between a Ducati and a KTM the Ducati usually comes out on top. However, because they've been fighting, Miguel Oliveira had caught both of them up. And Oliveira used his intelligence and decided just to, you know, not do anything silly into the final corner. Just break normally, take his normal line. And Jack Miller stuck up the inside of Paul Aspargo, sent them both wide. And Miguel Oliveira came through, so thank you very much. The door's wide open. He had the normal racing line. He blasted through. And Miguel Oliveira took an, a historic win for not him, just himself, but for his country as well. He's the first ever Portuguese rider to... Well, he's the first ever Portuguese rider to ride in the MotoGP category. He's now the first ever Portuguese rider to win a race in the MotoGP category. But he also got a race win for Tech 3. Now Tech 3 have been in MotoGP for I think it's about 20 years. Obviously they were with Yamaha for a very, very, very long time. And at the end of 2018, when they decided to sign with KTM and not with Yamaha, obviously Yamaha went with the Patronus team instead. Um everyone including myself were thinking that's not really a a good choice ktm because at the time obviously the ktms they were obviously getting better but they weren't going to be challenging for, for podiums or anything at that time so uh obviously everyone was you know saying that was definitely the wrong choice and here they are at the next season their second season with KTM. The KTM has obviously developed a hell of a lot because KTM do not have their own chassis in Moto2 anymore. They're obviously using uh, 
the uh, the, the Kallax frame. Obviously, Triumph engine. They're all in Triumph engines, but they're using the the Ka Kallax uh, chassis, and they've just got obviously their Red Bull KTM logos on the fairing. But yeah, the KTM has made a massive, massive step. We've already seen Brad Binder win a race this season at Bruno. And now we've seen Miguel Oliveira, first ever Portuguese rider on a Tech 3 KTM win a race this season as well. And uh, yeah, he uh, managed to play it really, really smart. Uh, Jack Miller did come home in second place. So the movie did put on Paul Espargo worked to an extent it, it, he did gain a place but he obviously lost one as well so he went from second to second um, and unfortunately Paul Espargaro who was really trying to get the win for KTM at KTM's home track as well uh, went from first to third so uh, not necessarily the KTM we expected to win around here but it was a KTM victory and uh, it was an important victory as well. So Miguel Oliveira, um, I listened to a podcast with uh, Gavin Emmett and Neil Hodson. They do um, a podcast and they had uh, Hervé Ponsoral on it. Uh, I think it's the, the previous podcast they had. And he did say that um, he's half expecting Oliveira to win at his home race at Porto Mayo at the end of the season. And uh, he's gone and done it at the Red Bull Rings. So, um, you know, huge congratulations to him. Uh, and obviously the team as well, because they've gone 20 years without a win. They've had podiums and uh, success with Yamaha in the past, but they've never had a win. And uh, just goes to show that, uh, you know, sometimes you've got to play the long game and be very, very patient. And then you will eventually be rewarded and... Uh, yeah, they got rewarded with the best result possible. So, uh, yeah, Oliveira, fantastic ride. And, uh, yeah, just, just real real shame for Vermeer, who, like I said, was leading the first race by a big, big margin. And uh, he, he would have won the race. So even if he had won the race, it would have been his first ever win in the MotoGP category. Um, but, yeah, this season is just... It's turning out to be an incredible season and it's not obvious who's going to win the championship. It's not obvious who's going to win the races. We've had four different winners from five races. We've obviously had Quattararo win the first two races at Jerez. We had Brad Binder win at uh, Bruno. And a rookie, obviously, with Binder, his first season in MotoGP. We had Davizioso win at the first Red Bull Ring race. And now we've had a Miguel Oliveira win here as well. So we've had a Yamaha win. We've had, a, well, Yamaha take two wins. Uh, KTM have taken two wins and a Ducati win as well. So it's a, a very, very strange season. And it's literally, I think it, I know it may sound obvious, but it's going to come down to who, who's going to be the most consistent. It's not necessarily going to come down to who's won the most races because some of the riders have been very inconsistent this season. With, I mean, sometimes it's no fault of their own. Sometimes they're having mechanicals. There's been quite a few mechanicals, mechanicals this season. More than we've had in like the previous two, two seasons, which is, you know, unheard of. Uh, we've obviously had uh, riders crashing as well. So, consistency is going to be key, but, you know, some most of the riders are not being that consistent. You know, they might be on the podium one race, and then the next race they might be, you know, only just inside the top ten. So, it's a very, very strong field. It's the strongest the field has been for a very long time. And obviously with the absence of Mark Marquez as well, no one's dominating. No one is able to dominate and it uh, makes for a really, really fantastic and intriguing season to see how it's going to pan out. Next two races at Mazzano, uh, we knew that Yamaha were going to struggle around the Red Bull ring because it's not a Yamaha track, it's uh, obviously more of a Ducati track. 
But Ducati's winning streak around here has come to an end, courtesy of Home Heroes KTM. Uh, before this race, uh, the only manufacturer that won around here in the GP class was Ducati, but now that has changed. So, uh, yeah, who knows what's going to happen at Mazzano? No idea. So, yeah, going back to the results, we obviously had uh, Miguel Oliveira take the win. Uh, Miller second, Paulo Spargo third. Mir, he did end up in fourth position. Uh, Dolby, he got fifth. Um, had the race not been stopped, I don't think he would have got fifth. I think he would have been, you know, maybe maximum seventh place or thereabouts. Uh, Alex Rins, he crashed out during the uh, first Red Bull ring race. If you remember, he went up the inside of Davizioso into turn six and then unfortunately lost the front. He did manage to finish this race and uh, finished in sixth. Top Honda, Tagami Nakagami. We need to talk about Nakagami for a minute because he's definitely a changed man recently. Um, now he's putting this down to the fact that he's been studying Marquez's data, but you would have thought he would have been doing that anyway, um, unless he's you know taken a lot more notice of it and maybe realising what some of it is and just coming to terms of what the hell Marquez does on a bike and you can see by Nakagami's body language that you know his riding style is changing as well he's definitely adapting to the Honda and it's showing you know in free practice and qualifying he was quick and uh, he ended up finishing top Honda down in seventh place Brad Binder not as good a race as he had here uh, at the previous round around here he ended up in 8th position. He got 4th at the first Red Bull Ring race. But, um, yeah, so not the best of results for him. But, you know, he's a rookie. So, you know, 8th place for a rookie is not bad. But we're just used to him being more towards the sharp end. And, in fact, winning a race as well. So, you know, nothing to be disappointed of. Um... Top the Yamaha again was Valentino Rossi in ninth place. Like I said, the Yamahas, I knew they were going to struggle around here. I'd, I'd said before we even came racing here uh, for the first race, Yamahas are going to struggle. You know, it's it's not a Yamaha track. It's what they're, they're lacking in top speed as well, which obviously isn't helping. You had the Yamahas going through the speed trap. I think it was 301 kilometers an hour. And the Ducatis were doing 310, 311. So, yeah, the Yamaha's about 10k slower on the uh, through the speed trap than the Ducatis. Or most of the other bikes, in fact, were, were hitting 310. So, yeah, the Yamaha's still the slowest things in the straight line. But again, they've had to kind of, you know, tone their engines down because of the, the faults that they've got with them. So, they have to go careful. And this is quite a high-stress track for engines because, obviously, it's a slow corner followed by a straight, followed by a slow corner, followed by a straight. So, yeah, Yamaha's struggling. Yeah, top of Yamaha, Rossi down in ninth. Um, obviously Vinales had to jump ship so he he was the only DNF actually he was the only DNF um, Ica Laquona a, a decent ride from him again in 10th position so you know I wouldn't put it past Ica winning a race this season the way this season's going you know literally anyone's going to win a race um Danilo Petrucci, 11th place. It's not going well for Petrucci this season. Maybe he's just trying to see this season out now. Obviously, he's going to Tech 3 KTM next season. So, be interesting to see how Petrucci gets some of the KTMs. But, obviously, the KTMs are getting better. Like I said, they've won two races this season already. So, they're a race-winning machine now. 
so it'll be interesting to see how Petrucci gets on with them. But um, yeah, disappointing for him to be down in 11th place, considering he is on a uh, Ducati. Uh, Alicia Spargrove was 12th. Um, yeah, that Aprilia, it's not where it needs to be. They've not made the improvements they were hoping for. So, uh, yeah, not good, but, you know, not good for Quattararo either on the Petronas Yamaha. He finished in 13th. So, you see what I mean by how inconsistent some of the riders are. You had a uh, double race winner this season, Quattararo. Uh, obviously, win the first two races, and now he's finishing in 13th place. Um... Zarko, like I said previously at the beginning of the, of the video, he did score a couple of points in 14th place despite starting from pit lane. But obviously with the stoppage that definitely helped him out because he was able to actually line up on the grid this time. Um, and yeah, so good, good for him for scoring a couple of points. I think he might have been able to get on the podium if, if he had been able to, you know, take his normal uh, qualifying grid grid slot of the front row. Even though he, he is injured, he was still showing some fantastic pace. Then we had uh, Franco Morbidelli in 15th again. Another disappointing race for, for Yamaha. Then outside the points, we had Alex Marquez, top Repsol Honda. Um... Uh, Cal Crutchlow in 17th. Obviously, Cal Crutchlow still not fully fit. Stefan Bradle, the other Repsol Honda, he was 18th. And you have Bradley Smith in 19th. Um, Michele Piro, who is standing in for the injured Bagnaia, he was 20th. And then Tito Rabat is down in 21st position. I'm not sure how much longer Rabat can go go on in MotoGP it is a shame because he is a fantastic rider obviously he was great in Moto2 but it's just not clicking with him I mean when you've got you know someone step into the team and go on a you know into a team that you've been in for a few years already and they are you know head and shoulders above what they're doing it's, uh, you know, questions have got to be asked. And, you know, Rabat, unfortunately, is just not clicking with it. Whether it's the Ducati, it's just not suiting his style. Maybe he needs to get on another manufacturer. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all very close. I mean, all the riders separated by 14 and a half seconds. So, you know, it's competitive MotoGP. It's the most competitive we've seen it for... A very long time and uh, definitely the most interesting we've seen it for a very long time as well it's just a, a great sport to watch at the moment it's not like F1 where you can pretty much guarantee you know who's got who's pretty much gonna win the races you can pretty much tell from qualifying who's gonna be able to win uh, you pretty much know it's uh, 99% of the time it's going to be a Mercedes or unless something goes wrong or if someone has a bit of luck but you know, F1 is becoming very very predictable but MotoGP definitely is not now the overall world standings at the moment the top 7 riders are separated by 25 points so just one race wins worth of points separates the top 7 that's how close it is. Obviously, you've got Quattararo leading at the moment with 70 points. Uh, Davizioso, he's only three points behind with 67. And you've got Miller in third. Uh, he has got 56. Uh, Brad Binder, fourth with 49. Uh, Vinales in fifth with 48. Then you've got uh, Nakagami, sixth with 46. And then you got Rossi 7 for 45. Just one point behind Rossi though is Mir. 
So 26 points separates the top eight. And then one point behind Mir is Oliveira. So 27 points separates the top nine riders in the world. And that is just, that's crazy. Usually by now, you know, well, obviously it would normally be Mark, but uh, whoever's leading the championship by now has usually got, you know, quite a hefty lead. But at the moment, no, it's uh, all very, very close, which makes it very exciting to watch. And like I said, you don't know from one weekend to the next who's going to be able to win the race. And that's, uh, that's what I'm loving about this season. It is very, very unpredictable. You don't know who's going to do what. Qualifying is, you know, becoming exciting to watch as well. Even FP3 as well, which is basically qualifying and qualifying. Because they're like pretty much qualifying for who's going to go through straight through to Q2. And yeah, it's just an amazing season. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate that we've got racing at all this season, especially with everything going on in the world. But to have fantastic racing, a very, very close championship. And just, you know, literally anyone can win a race at the moment. Literally anyone. The, across the board, just, you know, it's so, so close. And when you just look at the, the free practice times and qualifying, you can see how close it is. I mean, in free practice, you get like, Pretty much most of the riders, if not all, separated by like one and a half seconds. So, you know, the, the riders trying to shave times off their lap times. You know, they, they might shave like a couple of thousandths off their lap time, but they won't move anywhere. Or they can be like three tenths off, but then they're down in like eighth position. It's... it's it's really bizarre to see. I mean, to be fair, I have had that on this game a couple of times where qualifying has been that close that, you know, you end up being three, four tenths off and you're like down in like tenth position. So it's, uh, yeah, a really, really good season. And like I said, obviously Marquez is out for another two to three months. So... If he does decide to come back and, you know, race the last few races, um, then obviously that's going to throw another spanner into the works because obviously he's going to want to try and win races. By that point, you know, we may have... We may have a handful of riders all fighting for the title, which is an exciting prospect. It's not very often you get, you know, more than two riders fighting for a title towards the end of the season. But, you know, it's... it's it's looking likely that that may possibly happen. And obviously, the finale for this season is not at Valencia. It's at Portimao, which, you know, I don't think any of the riders have actually raced that before. So, when it comes down to it, it's uh, a, a great season. Uh, they've got a couple of weekends off at the moment until Mazzano. Who knows what's going to happen there? I have no idea what's going to happen there. Even when we see the free practice times and the qualifying times, doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean that's the person who's going to be within a shout of a, a race win. It could be anyone. But hopefully it will uh, continue being a fantastic championship this season. Uh, continue being safe as well. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how the rest of the season pans out because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think we're still in for some more shocks and some more treats. But who's it going to come through? I think Mir is going to win a race. I mean, like I said, he should have won this one, but unfortunately it was uh, red flagged and he decided not to change his front tyre. So, yeah. But I think he's definitely on course for, for a win, is Mir. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. As we come to the end of our race as Oliveira, we do take the win. 
So yeah, looking forward to the next round of MotoGP. Uh, let me know down in the comments, guys. You know, how are you finding this season of MotoGP? Like I said, you take Marquez away and it's just uh, a free-for-all. It is literally a free-for-all. But anyway, guys, that is it from me. I'll leave you with the podium. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe and to wash your hands. See you.